It's the ESCTips.com Melody Festival and Podcast. Bringing you unrivaled coverage of Eurovision's premier selection show. If you love schlager, bad pronunciation and all things Swedish, stay tuned to ESCTips.com. Hello and welcome to the ESC Tips Melody Festival and 2019 preview podcast. And guess what? It's our fifth anniversary for talking about Melody Festival and with Torba. Woo! <laughs> Tobias escaped last year, but Tulbe is still replying to my emails, thankfully. Um, so fresh from his Aussie adventure, happy podcasting birthday, Tulbe. Thank you so much. I am celebrating here with champagne. Is that last night's champagne or have yes. you opened a fresh one? Uh, it's nine o'clock-ish uh, uh, UK times and uh, Tulbe had a late one. Um, so he's been very good getting up this early uh, just to talk about Melody Festival. And... I put my alarm. It, it just sounded five seconds ago and now I'm here. Um, anyway, right, let's get straight into our slightly streamlined format and starting with uh, Gothenburg. And unless you've been living in a cave for the last month, you should already know the running order, so you don't need my broken Swedish pronunciation. You are cheating. Yes, yes. So looking at the main direct to final contenders, shall I start with Anna Bergendahl? Torba, is this about PR redemption narrative, the song, <coughs> or is it a bit of both? I would say it's very much a bit of both. We must remember, though, that... Anna Bergendahl does not have a career in Sweden at the moment. Us Melfest fans, we of course know who she is, but nobody else does or care. She has released a few songs that during the last year has been played on the radio, but I'm not sure that people actually realize that it, it is her songs. Uh, they've been played a, li- a little bit or, or quite a lot, but I don't think that people are are actually connecting those songs with her or uh, know who she is. But at the same time, people are talking about this song. It is supposed to be a strong contender. It might be a bit grown up. Uh, Like it it appeals more to uh, a more grown up audience rather than the, rather than the kids. But she also had a very, very strong ID in her voice. So I don't think she's put at the very end of the first, uh, first semi unless she's there to actually make it to the final. Yeah, and actually for the two uh, for the last two seasons of Melody Festival, the Heat One Pimp Slot winner has won the televote in the final. Um, Bjorkman likes to mix things up every so often, so uh, you can't really read too much into that. But uh, I do think the uh, the Heat One Pimp Slot does mean a lot. Absolutely, but when it also also when it comes to uh, the first semi, we have Nano. Yep. And um, well, the thing is. He had a very, you know, he had a very big hit with Hold On, but nobody has heard from him since. Uh, so he could be in the competition just to kind of come on here. Here I am. Yeah, listen to me. But people are talking about this song. And he's, got, got, he's got three Eurovision winning songwriters. Exactly. Exactly. It's Thomas Gerson and the Deb couple. And so, uh, Carb. Oh, who? Uh, te- uh, only Teardrops. Oh, yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah. Uh, I forgot about it. <laughs> I, I, well, so she's got four uh, Eurovision winners then. Yeah, I, yeah. if you count the duo as a, as a, as a pair. Linia Deb and Joy Deb are two different people. I know, but they come in a little package. Well, at the same time, they are known to write songs apart as well. But apart from that, what people are talking about is that this is a strong song. It's supposed to be very much like his last song. Uh, but faster, and, I believe. Uh, a little bit higher tempo, yes, but not a lot. And it's supposed to be kind of the same when you have this, like the gospel choir coming in the end, yeah. filling the whole room with their voices as well, together with his voice. What he has against him is that He's not a very charismatic singer. His his voice is great, but he's not a Monselmelov or a Donis Alcedo. He is 
the guy that stands in the middle of the stage and that's kind of boring. I think if uh, there was one criticism from Hold On and that's the staging just felt way too dark. Yeah. There wasn't enough transition in well, the mood. way too dark, but also Nano is not a very charismatic person. No. You know, he, he's, he's not 18 and cute, but he's not 18 and cute. He's 30 and, uh, and kind of looks a little bit like a gangster. And that will talk, speak against him. Yeah. But still, people are talking about this as being a really, really strong contender. But we also have Victoria here. We do. Now, is she just making up the numbers with her ballad? Because I remember watching the press conferences and they can be very revealing. Mm -hmm. And um, something just told me that she wasn't in it to win it. Oh, but she is. Okay. She is very much. But I do think that people are, are not prepared for what she is entering because this is not anything like her uh, her previous songs this is the big ballad hmm. um and she can sing she can absolutely sing but is this the type of song that people want with her remember when isaac came back with after doing a a up-tempo pop, pop pop. song yeah yeah and then coming with a ballad it wasn't it was incredible and when it comes to victoria well we'll see because previously she has been the the televote favorite, but not the but not the jury favorite. Yeah. Now with a ballad, she might lose both. Yeah, but then you've got two other um, upbeat songs in this heat, which is uh, uh, Mohambi and um, is it Ziana and uh, Ania? Uh, 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 Anis, Anis and Ziana yeah. and Mohambi, but also High Fifteen. There's yes. three upbeat songs, and with these, I. I haven't, people are talking about them, and Mohambi has, of course, he, he's had a big career. He has. But he, he's not known, he's not a well-known face in Sweden at all. I'm not, I'm not expecting I, massive things from him, if I'm honest. And, and you shouldn't, because these songs, all three of them, are supposed to be rather good songs. So here it comes down to who can, who can make the audience laugh, smile, dance along. Yeah, uh, it, I am quite certain it won't be Arya Sayama, but it can be just any one of, of the other three. Um, when it comes to Amistad Demina, he is a YouTuber with a with a rather large following. But uh, Siana, his his partner, she was an idol a couple of years ago, and yeah. she was like the the twelfth or something. She, nobody remembers her, and if she's not likable on stage. Uh, they won't. They won't vote for Amis if she's not likable. Yeah. Uh, and High Fifteen, you know, it's they are really young girls. They might attract the audience, but they might also go be a, a complete bomb. So, I am not sure who will be the fourth contender in this in this heat. Yeah, but the uh, there's effectively three people, three acts fighting for the two qualification spots in the final. Uh, I would say so, yes. One of them's um, got a drop. Exactly. So over into Heat 2. Mm -hmm. um, is the Hannah and Liamu duet worthy of its short odds, which at the time of podcasting, it's uh, 7 to 1. Frederick's uh, Sonofus uh, wrote Emily De Forest's Rainmaker. Now, um, he's in the writing team as well. Have you heard much about this song? Well, um, what people are saying is that it is a strong song. They said that last year. And Hanna and Li Liam or Liamo, they they didn't enter Melody Festival as a as a duo. They both wanted to enter Melody Festival with separate songs. Yeah. But this was kind of uh, presented to them, and they were like, "Yeah, that could be fun." Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure whether they wh whether the the song has not been written for them specifically. Do you know that was fairly obvious in the uh, press conferences again? You saw these two people talking about a song that, and they didn't look as if they were together as an item, as yeah. a package. Uh, <laughs> that was so obvious. But they they do know how to fake it. Yeah. And if they can pull off a Spain last year, if they 
I'm going to be rude now, but if they can feel as horny for each other, <laughs> uh, because that is what they need. These two, they are both of them are gorgeous, uh, and the song is supposed to be strong. But what they need is to get that electricity in between them. Yeah, uh, and they can get that, but they can also, you know, kind of not make it because what what they really need is that horniness to shine through as if they are just 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 craving each other isn't that if the problem get that working yeah isn't that the problem with like uh, modern uh, reality tv talent show contestants is that they can sing the songs what, but they can't sure, perform them what what are you saying that they've already had sex <laughs> I, I i don't know what they do in their private lives but um yeah. no what what i'm saying is that is that um if they can get that electricity if they can channel some sort of emotion uh, yeah. they should be okay but they might also because they they've been hanging out they're really good friends they are not an item but you can see that they at least there is an attraction in between them but if they have grown bored of that it might sh uh, show on stage as well so i'm not sure that they are uh, they are absolutely a contender for the winning spot, but they are not the, the sure thing. So uh, when you are reading uh, Torba's Schlager blog uh, for mm -hmm. Heat 2, the words you need to look out for are horny. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Or uh, in Swedish, kort. Lovely. Okay. Um, in, in, this, uh, in this heat, we have Oscar Enestad. Exactly. Uh, I was going to come the, on to him. The former foe and O contestant. Um, his song is about his relationship with uh, a very much older woman. Uh, I think it's almost 30 years in between them. People are saying that this is a very strong song. Mm. Uh, he's not the the guy from Phono that, that you remember. Like Felix Sandman last year, he was the fun and cute and quirky one. Yeah. Uh, you have Umar in a later heat this year. We do. He is the talented one. And this one is... Oscar always was the kind of okay, so he is in there too. He he he, he was never the one that people talked about. I think some of his music is quite good. His his recent releases, they've got um, a certain fresh sort of electronic uh, that uh, sound that is uh, very much in vogue at the moment. Um, he absolutely he looks and, good in his videos as well. And with this, uh, what people are saying about this song is that it is modern, and you will. You will be able to relate to the lyrics. Hmm. I think it's something like "Love it, love it, love it." Uh, my parents don't like it. Uh, so, so you know, you will. It will both be relatable for a younger audience, but for us a little bit older, we will go like, "Yeah, we know they didn't like it." <laughs> She's thirty years older, okay. <laughs> um, now at the press conference, I keep mentioning these these pre press conferences, but they are gold dust um now margaret um i don't know whether she said this when you interviewed her but she said to the uh, the wee wee guy she wasn't bothered about eurovision now i i know bjorkman likes to mix things up is this a false pimp slot for margaret not a false pimp slot but you must remember that in sweden there has never been a, a an artist from a foreign country winning it true uh, Last year, she was the first artist from a foreign country making it to the final since, like, 2005, I think. So she still has that to beat. And, th and last year, she was kind of the novelty. Oh, yeah, that, that cute little girl, uh, she had nice songs in Poland, and now she's in Melfest. Now she has to, uh, she has to face the prejudice in, like, so... What the F is she doing in Melfast again? Why is she not competing in Poland? But this is supposed to be not as quirky a song as in My Cabana, but still an up-tempo, nice party song. Yeah. Uh, and with that, I, I would not say that she's competing for, for victory, but she is, she is in here to get another big hit. She's in the mix.
Oh yeah, absolutely. The one thing I would enjoy, um, and normal viewers of Melody Festival and won't have seen it, I would love them to shoehorn another toilet into the staging, which was dropped for the uh, final performance. <laughs> Uh, I doubt that that will happen. <laughs> I know that her record company, uh, the label, they were like, they've been joking about that toilet seat. Uh, <laughs> so, so no, it won't happen. Uh, Andreas Johnson, we need to remember that that the pimp salt is not only number seven; it's also number one. Yeah. And apparently, because I've, I was so surprised when I heard that Andreas Johnson was going to be in the competition again. I was, I was like. Why? What the heck? What is he doing there again? Isn't this the most boring choice of an artist ever? Yeah. But his song is supposed to be really strong. And he has got the audience he has is the 35 year old, 35 year plus female audience absolutely love him. And if he has got a strong song, he can attract a little bit of a younger audience as well, and he can attract the males because he's not um, he's not sexy in a bad way. Yeah. He is cool. It's like a, it's like sexy in a sting sort of way. Exactly, and what people are saying is that well, he wouldn't be in the competition unless he had a really good song. Uh, they wouldn't allow him in there. So I would say that he. Um, when I first heard that he was in, I, w I, I was like, okay, so that's a seventh place for sure. <laughs> but now he's supposedly a real contender. Okay. That, that's kind of exciting. What, what we do also have here is um, the Swedish um, stage legend, Jan Malmkö, who has a song written by Anders Vretov, who wrote um, for uh, Hasse Andersson's uh, song a couple of years ago. Yeah. So what people are thinking is that, oh my, might he have written another one of those? You know, uh, the modern pop schlagers that an, a, an older uh, male artist can make into a hit. Yeah. But when it comes to Jan Manfred, he's a little bit too theatrical. He's a little bit, he, he is a stage actor and it shows in everything he does on stage. So I would say that this song might, might attract a younger audience as well. But what I've heard about it is that it is a little bit too theatrical to become as big a hit as Guldo Jonas Gogar was a couple of years ago. Hmm. Okay. So it's actually quite an open heat. Yes. Uh, heat too, which it often is. It's, it's often the one that throws up a slightly freaky result. Um, but we will move on to... Heat 3, and it's the return of Jon Henrik Fjallgren, which is the one name I can pronounce. Um, oh. is, is it third time lucky for the new Let's Dance champion? It might very well be, because we also need to remember that this is the third heat. When it comes to the third heat, people, if they voted a little bit, you know, wild and crazy for a couple of a couple of weeks, they wanted to be traditional now. They need the traditional to work. And what I've heard about this song is that it is, well, uh, Fredrik Schempe, the, the songwriter, he, he says, he says he's, he has said that he wanted to make Jon Henrik Fjellgren go a little bit Kygo. Mm -hmm. So uh, supposedly it is um, a uh, it, it is a joy, but Jun Henrik will also be singing on his own this time. Yeah. And people are telling me that it is a really strong chorus. And having having this having a song by this guy um with the joy and, and, and the, the kind of I'm not sure what the word is in English. Uh, the 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 nature what what was the Are you on about his personality? No, I'm oh. I'm trying to say about the music, like like when Emer Quinn won. What what was the the genre? Oh, oh, okay. So what, almost um, ethereal. What what was that? Ethereal, sort of. Um... Oh, but but so would you say that his for uh, his previous songs is that genre as well? Yeah, haunting. Would it be haunting? 
Yeah, are we, are we on the, the right track here? <laughs> I'm haunting. That, that, that's ghosts. Um, but, okay, so whatever we're to, we just said, this is kind of um, nature romantic. It's, it's about the, the Swedish nature and, and, and uh, um, it, it's kind of nationalistic. Okay. Uh, but in in a very sweet and and kind way, as I've heard it, with an extremely strong chorus. Yeah. It is very much because I haven't been a big fan of his previous songs, uh, because I thought that the first one didn't have a chorus at all. The I other the one, second one was very good actually. The second one had a chorus that was boring, mm. and I I didn't like his uh, his duet partner. I thought it was all right, but. What people are telling me is that this song combines the two of those and adds the modern production in the song. Uh, as Fredrik uh, Kemper put it, they put in a, a bit of Kygo in it. Mm. And the chorus is supposed to be a killer. Has uh, so, Frederick Schomper ever written a bad chorus? Exactly. Exactly. And he has never worked with Jon Henrik Fjellgren before. This is a proper contender. Okay. I am I am 100% sure that he will make it to the final. Of course. This is also a contender for the top three slots. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that's the one challenge for uh, Fjallgren is, um, can he get the juries on side this time? Because that's where he has sort of fell back a little bit, uh, his, his lost ground. Exactly. Um, because the and juries don't tend to go for Swedish language. Yeah. That is where Fredrik Schempe comes in because he knows how to write a proper song, not just being being a very likable person on stage that attracts a Swedish audience. Yeah. So this might be the 2019 winner. I'm 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 just throwing it out there. There it, it is not a, a done deal. Yeah. There are at least four or five songs that will compete with him about this, but. If the song is as good as people are telling me, as strong as people are telling me, this is absolutely a contender. Okay. And, of course, we should mention at this point, because we haven't mentioned it earlier, is that the the televoters have their power back, thanks to the new rules. Um, yes. So the jury's uh, wings have been clipped. Um, the, the televote winner is likely to have more of a say this time. Absolutely, because they've they've grouped uh, the they've grouped the televotes or the app votes yeah. into age groups, but but that's not the main thing. The main thing is that they are not doing it um, percent percentage wise in the final, but rather um, weighted as so the the favorite in this age group will get the twelve points from yeah. that age group. Exactly. So, so yes, this is very <coughs> much. Um, the others in this competition, I have not got a clue who will actually make it to the final. Well, because I, was, I, I was also struggling here because you've got Lena from Alcazar. Lena you've from got... Alcazar. But, but, and what people are saying is that this is kind of the Jessica Andersson song from last year. Yeah. It is a modern pop schlager. And that might be what attracts people because, because uh, uh, with Jessica Andersson last year, that was what people wanted. They wanted that modern modern type, but traditional song. Yeah. But the thing with Lena is that she is not, as a solo artist, she's not very well known. She has she has got a, a, a long track record, but she's not like Jessica Anderson, a well-known face. So, so she might struggle. Uh, we have Martin Stienmark, who is... Lina's sister's husband, <laughs> uh, so, uh, and he's been in the competition before several times, but he hasn't fared well the last couple of times either. But one of his songwriters, Uno Svenningsson, is a very, very popular artist and songwriter in Sweden. So that might make him a contender. Mm -hmm. And then you got Dolly Style, but I think that Dolly Style will attract the younger audience, and that that won't fare well enough uh, they might make it to under Hansen but they're not going to make it straight to the final and then you've got the 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 idol runner-up Rebecca Carlson you've yeah. got the phone o guy Omar Rudberg this and you've got 
apparently, we must mention this, apparently love, the lovers of Valdaro, which are... Um, the, They're the wild card, aren't they? The wild card from, from, a talent, uh, from a talent show. And apparently they, for once, have a... That wild card, for once, have a good song. Well, it's even re- the, the 80s sound is in, is in vogue, just like... Um... It, it is, and this is the only song written by the by the Euphoria duo Piet, Peter Bostrom and Thomas Gerson. Yeah. Uh, so, I I would like them to do well, and also um, the singer Eric Hebu. He was, you know, he was in the Moldavia Mol, Moldavia act in Eurovision uh, last year. Uh, one of the guys in high heels. He's he's a charming guy, but he's also you know he's a musical he, he's he's done lots of lots of musicals but in the in the background so this is for him to actually take his stage presence and and make himself seen and heard brilliant so it's uh it's uh, Jon Henry Fjallgren and one other is what we're saying. Exactly. <laughs> Jon Henry Fjallgren and then one of the other six. Uh, we don't really know and do we really care? No. Uh, over in Heat 4 and are we agreed that Dan's Bond qualifies? I do think so. Uh, I wouldn't say it is because of Dan's Bond but I would say it is because of Arvingana. They have a huge following. This is crazy. Uh, had anybody said this to me a couple of years ago, I would go like, yeah, our big enough, whatever. But they have a huge following. They are five really, sh- or are they four? I can't remember. They're four, perhaps. Four really charming guys. The singer is, um, is uh, very likable, and they've done this before. And this is kind of their comeback. Mm-hmm. And the song is written by, in parts, Name Giranval. I am sure that they are qualifying. But then they are also competing against Jon Lundvik, who is number 28 this year, yep. last in the in the last semifinal. But is that is that a sign of strength in the song or is that almost a reward for qualifying from slot two last year? I would say rather the latter. Yeah. Uh, uh, but had he not had a strong song, he wouldn't be there. No. Uh, and this is supposedly more of an up-tempo song. <laughs> uh, people are describing this as as Nano is first in the first semi-final, Jon Lundvik is last in the last semi- semi-final, and apparently their sound is rather similar, but Jon Lundvik has uh, more, even more of the up-tempo beats in his song, uh, and it might be that you have to listen the, to the song a couple of times, yeah. which might be bad for him. But since he's such a strong vocalist, yeah. it, it might work still. But we have a dark horse. I am talking about Lisa Ajax. Ajax. And I know that when we've done these, these pre-shows previously, you've been the one saying... But what about Lisa Ajax? Won't she win? And I'll be like, oh, no, never. That won't happen. <laughs> this time, oh, my effing Jesus Christ. This is supposed to be such a strong song. But also, and listen to this. Cool, go on. Whisper it. This, yes. Don't mention this to anybody. I'm just telling it to you, Gab. This is a very strong ballad. And Lorraine turn this one down to do statements instead. Oh. Oh, and me. what people are saying, well, people, it, it, people backstage, are, are, are they're saying like, okay, so it wasn't a choice. It wasn't like this or statements. This was, she tried it and then she, she passed on it. But they're also saying, that was a effing mistake. So I Only time will that, tell. Yes. I would say that, do not think that Lisa Ajax is a is a failure this time. This might be very well her first proper hit within within the wider audience because she has a big following in certain age groups. But this might be when she also attracts the older audience. Mm. And she has such a good good voice as well. She um, has yes. And the first um, I forget her first song now, but they draped toilet roll all over the stage, didn't they? It didn't really add to the 
um, yeah. effect. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let, let's not do toilet We're rolls. doing toilets again. If, if they do toilet rolls, we know that her record label don't want her to win. <laughs> uh, we also, I did mention Bishara. He's the, he's kind the of YouTuber, the wild isn't he? Mm. He's, I think he just turned 16. A very, very cute boy. He, he's not even a YouTuber. He started singing on Instagram and has got a big following there. He's very charming, very, very, you know, innocent looking. Mm. If if he can stand out on stage, he might be a contender, at least for, for making it to the final. Yeah. I'm not talking about a, about a winner here uh, because I haven't heard that much about his song, but it is written by Benjamin Ingrosso, last year's winner. So mm. it should be a strong song. So, all together, uh, out of these four semis, I've probably mentioned like 12 or 13 songs that, oh, this is a strong song, it might win, right? You've been very uh, forthcoming this year. And I haven't even, I haven't been bad, I haven't bad-mouthed anyone. No, not at all, no. I think that's when we bring someone else into the conversation, I think they lead you astray. Exactly, I've been a good boy. Yeah, so that's pretty much it from us. Other than the fact that we need to pick our three potential winners. Oh, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Okay. So so I don't have to pick one, two, and three. I, I need to pick three different, just, right? Three names that oh, you okay. think will go on to challenge for victory. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go for Jon Henrik Fjellgren, Lisa Ajax, and oh, Jesus Christ. Is it Oscar? Is it Nano? Is it Anna Bergendahl? I would love to put Anna Berendahl in there, but I'm not sure that... I'm going to put Oscar Ehrenestad in there. Okay. Wonderful. I'm going to actually put Anna in there, mm-hmm. um, just purely because I think there'll be some jury recognition there. It's like the name will be there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know what the juries are like. They are very Eurovision-focused. I will follow a few of your pointers, actually, and put uh, Fjallgren in there, maybe to get third. Or if the song is mm-hmm. amazing, um, go forward and win. But again, I am quite keen on um, Oscar as Oscar. well. Yeah. Oscar. Having watched a few of his videos over the last couple of days, I really like his music. So if he comes up with the goods, it could be a very, very good Melody Festival and final. So those are our three. We will see who is victorious in another month's time or so. So... Thanks, Torba, for your time this morning. Um, I think Torba's going back to bed now, uh, and I'm hopping I on am. a train to London. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the first songs will be previewed a week on Wednesday. Rehearsals will then start on the Thursday, when the public will hear the songs for the first time. And then the public dress rehearsal is on the Friday, uh, which is when we get our first audience poll of the year, which is usually wrong. Um, And then on Saturday, our lives end until mid-March, as the Eurovision selection season enters its peak. Um, So until next time, bye. Bye, bye. ESCTips.com will return with another show soon. In the meantime, show us some love by following us and sharing this podcast with your Facebook and Twitter friends. 